as the Walt Disney Company takes a victory lap, putting out National Geographic documentaries talking about how greatly they have transformed Epcot. All of their rides appear to be busted. World Garden is completed, but they're taking out key features of the park and replacing them with things that you might be able to buy at your random home improvement store. Let's talk about how Disney is not quite Moroccan our socks off here on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and here with me is Mr. Vash Guy. Vash, are you part of the That Park Place community of tomorrow? Otherwise known I, as Epcot? I believe I am, and I think I actually donated memberships for others so they can join on the party with us, so that's all well and good. Unfortunately, though, this park that inspired our name, our branding, and everything, well, there's been some declining by degrees, and that is most unfortunate. Yeah, it, it really is unfortunate, and uh, it, it, it's it's such a fascinating thing to me that uh, that Epcot right now has put in this World Celebration Gardens, and and they're doing all of this work to b build this pavilion space, and 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 now they're not going to have a festival here at Epcot for ninety two days or something ridiculous. It's probably less by now because by the time we've read the, the article and put it out uh, here. So they have put all of this money, six years, I think that Epcot was behind walls as they're trying to do this. Finally, they put in Moana, a journey of water and, and, and that's already broken over and over again. Uh, they put in uh, world celebration and they put in these amazing lights uh, that are supposed to be synchronized to uh, harmonious, sorry, forgive me, luminous, and uh, and those get busted over and over again, like 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 ten lights at once are out. They put in Walt at Dreamers Point, and and it's a statue, but but they didn't change the statue enough to. They put him on a bench, but they put him on a bench that was not quite set to the way that the uh, the, the 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 bend in the knees wasn't quite right. So then they have to have another step up to the bench. You see people tripping. They put it. They light him from underneath in in bronze. So he, he kind of looks monstrous as we're here. And now they finally finish uh, World Celebration Gardens and they put up a rusty wall. Vash, are you looking forward to seeing a rusty wall at Epcot? Not really looking forward to seeing a rusty wall at Epcot. I don't think this is going to sell that. any vacation packages. I'll say this, Jonas. This is, uh, this is tough right here. And it's interesting how uh, Block Mickey, uh, Mike, really wanted to get that seam in there as well on the two by four behind seam. it. Is that a metal wall or is that a plastic on, on top of metal wall? Uh, I believe this is metal. I'm pretty sure, but, but, but who knows? Maybe plastic would have been actually a better material to use because it wouldn't stain people's pants as they, as That's they true. lean up we, against we, it. We, we have seen tweets from the WDWNT crew over there. They just said that their pants were stained by that same material on uh, some of these benches. What in the world? You can see that Walt's statue right there in that little step that uh, uh, Jonas was just referring to right there. Here it is finally revealed. This is from a laughing place now. Uh, you can see this wall in all its glory. And I, and I must say it feels maybe perhaps a little uninspired. And while it does match the motif of the area, that assumes that that motif was worth being consistent with. Uh, this looks like something that probably should be in Galaxy's Edge, like somewhere between Star Trek and Star Wars, but like not the nice part of Star Wars, kind of the rundown part of Star Wars. I, I just, I don't get it. Uh, it's fine. There's probably, you know, I don't know how much time you're going to spend looking at a wall, but but the, the idea that that we're here for Epcot and and and, and looking at something like this, I, it's just kind of tragic. Like, like, what is this supposed to be? I don't think I'm going to see somebody. Uh, OK, OK, I'll give you a for instance on T3PO. We talk about the Epcot aesthetic a lot when we talk about how we're going to do the channel art. I don't think anyone is going to look at this in the weird chunks that are not in it that uh, are are diamond shape and say, you know what? That's what we need to do. We need to we need to center our merchandise around that design, not not a big geodesic sphere, but instead, whatever this is. <laughs> it's a really strange decision on their part, because to me, it doesn't necessarily evoke Epcot. Now, I understand they were trying to take Epcot into a different direction, but I don't think it necessarily evokes that either. Uh, it, it definitely feels like to me, the Imagineers didn't quite know where they wanted to take uh, Epcot uh, ultimately, and, and maybe that had something to do with cost uh, overruns or cost issues related to the pandemic and stopping construction, restarting it with reduced budgets. I don't know what happened, uh, but it doesn't feel 
like turbo a consistent charge? story is being is <laughs> yeah, turbocharged. It doesn't feel like a consistent story is being told, which continuity and storytelling is very, very important, as we'll get into with our next story involving Epcot. This one, you know, uh, make what you want of the walls, but I think uh, this one is far more integral uh, to the story of at least one pavilion, and that would be the Morocco Pavilion. Now, I bring up this story right here because Disney's definitely taken on a more of an ownership stake of the Morocco Pavilion itself following October of 2020, when this article was actually originally published, and they've taken ownership of uh, the, the 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 market stalls and the restaurants included in this. This is undergoing a big refurbishment, or perhaps reimagining is what they'll call it now, uh, for this area. And as part of that, they have decided to change out a couple of things in this forecourt area. And you can see this beautiful forecourt area, how it existed before. I'm going to set this up for, for you, Jonas, and for our audience right Please here. Please do. The Morocco Pavilion has the distinct enjoyment of actually having the artisans and craftsmen from that country contribute heavily to the design and to the overall execution of this pavilion itself right here. In fact, legend has it that uh, King Hassan II of Morocco sent uh, Malerns or craftsmen to work with Disney Imagineers to create authentic Moroccan tile work. The Malerns helped create nine tons of handcraft and handcut tile that adorn the Morocco pavilion. And and you can see this throughout. And this, this uh, tile work that you see on this fountain right here is actually consistent not only in this section, but in others. And you can see how the pattern designs and so forth are, are are meticulously designed in such a fashion to be consistent with Moroccan culture and also uh, the Muslim faith, as you can see right here. That's so. So this is the actual artisan. We're talking about a theme park here, right? As opposed to an amusement park, this is supposed to be a theme park. And and we so much talk about immersion on this channel because they force everyone to talk about immersion. This is something that actually has a story to it, which is something that that you used to see so much in in Walt Disney World. Uh, another part of of Epcot where you can tell a story is uh, is it is it going into the uh, Wonders of Life Pavilion where they had uh, the murals on either side and there were only two tiles different. And them, and it was the two different artisans that had worked on it. The signature panels for the father and the daughter uh, were the only ones that were different. Those are the, the kind of things where you can tell this interesting story about it, but that story ties back to people. And, and the idea of one of the artisans of the King of Morocco coming over, sending his personal artisan to work on the Moroccan section of the World Showcase at Epcot, that's a great story. And it actually speaks to... Uh, world collaboration in so many ways. That idea of it's a small world after all, or the story of us, as they've tried now twice to do in their fireworks shows. This is something of international cooperation. It's great story. But what are they doing now, Vash? Uh, like I said, uh, you can you can see just by reading this, this description here of just how much care and consideration that the Imagineers and the Moroccan people actually actually had for this pavilion and telling this story. And this extends even beyond this pavilion. For example, like the Twilight and Tower of Terror at Disney Solid Studios, from a very distinct angle across World Showcase, you can actually see uh, both in your view right there. And the Imagineers were so considerate that back in the day, they made the backside of that attraction consistent roughly with the architectural stylings of Morocco so that it wouldn't feel out of place for the 100 or so people who could actually see it from that angle. Well, consideration no more, I suppose, because now we have taken this beautiful fountain with these gorgeous planters featuring this hand-cut tile work, and we have, in the fountain's case, removed it entirely, and for the remaining planters that used to house trees, well, now they are flower beds, and these flower beds have had their tiles replaced with what could be described as Disney's Hollywood Studios or DCA 1.0 bathroom tiles and oh. not even to the floor, as you see right there. I, you know, that's pretty standard. Maybe whoever did this might be available to my kitchen. What do you, what do you think, Vash? Do you think we could call them up uh, and see if they could uh, be available to do some home remodeling? Well, I don't know if I would necessarily choose this uh, 
worker here uh, because even they don't necessarily line up as you can see the seam work here. And like I said, um, there could have been time spent to actually make this tile consistent with the ground, which which is inconsistent, I will say. But uh, it would take it would take a little bit of effort, but they could have. There's a concrete chin underneath those as well. <laughs> Yes. Oh my yes. <laughs> so my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to compare this to any theme park in particular. The joke that I made when when we were talking about the San Francisco Bridge or the Tory gates that had been overlaid on the San Francisco Bridge out there at Disney's California Adventure was which Six Flags did you find this at? This is obviously not a Six Flags design. It's it's something that is. This is something that's meant to not be noticed. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, th this is this is something that's supposed to, I think, blend and not necessarily uh, tell or its own story. Do they uh, at least also, I can assume? Also, what's up with Epcot getting rid of all the fountains? Like, first of all, Fountain of Nations is is it was was wonderful, and and you can have fountains forever. By the way, Versailles still using the same fountains after what, like four hundred years or something ridiculous like that. Well, and, th and, that's they, a and they get rid of the Fountain of Nations in order to replace it with Moana's Journey of Water and World Celebration, and they they take the fountain out of the middle of of what they was there was supposed to be a fountain in the middle of World Celebration, and they replace it with a planter. Uh, fountains are amazing. Fountains are awesome. Fountains are something that you can't do at home. Okay, maybe you can do a little fountain at home, but you can't do a you can't do a Disney fountain at home. This is something that if I wanted to, if I ordered the tile, I could go do this by the end of the week. Yes, so uh, absolutely, you 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 very much could if you wanted to necessarily do that. But uh, you bring up a, a great point here, here Jonas, because for some reason. I don't know if Bob Iger lost somebody in a fountain at one point and now we're just taking <laughs> it out on the fountains of of the parks or something like that. But we have lost so many fountains in the last two years. This one right here being the Magnolia Fountain that you can that you found in New Orleans Square at Disneyland. Both the Roger Rabbit and the Mickey Mouse fountains that you used to be able to find in Toontown have also been removed within the last couple of years. Uh, they have removed ornamentation and so forth from uh, this muck. Up at Fountain at Disney's Hollywood Studios, and of course, uh, the uh, talk about the Morocco Fountain, obviously, but the most famous one, like you said, is the Fountain of Nations. Oh, all yeah. within the last couple of years, they've removed all of these, and I just don't understand why. I get it. There is a maintenance hurdle. They're, they're looking to reduce expenditures as related to these parks and, and looking to maximize uh, uh, operating income. I get that. I, I, I get I, I, I understand that mentality. But these are places that are very expensive and you're supposed to be giving them these transportative type experiences that they can't get anywhere else like you've just uh, so brilliantly brought out, Jonas. Why, oh why, are we getting rid of the things that make these parks unique? I, I don't understand. I mean, there have been famous proposals in front of fountains. No one is going to be getting down on one knee in front of those planters. And, and if they do, it's going to be a complete coincidence. These parks are withering away to something that is just not special here. I mean, we often talk about Epic Universe and what's going on over there. Epic Universe is incorporating a bunch of fountains into their designs, coincidentally. That is not the point that I'm making here. It's not that water brings people into theme parks, but it, it, it really adds to the kinetics, as Culture Casino uh, likes to point out. It adds to the idea of life flowing through these spaces. It's nice. It's tranquil. It's something that you look at and you go, oh, that's neat. Again, like I said, it's something that not everybody can do at home. It has to incorporate some kind of artistry. Even, you know, I was so, it was such a funny thing when I found out that uh, all those all those uh, fountains in the middle of, uh, of retention ponds at uh, golf courses and things like that, that's actually to keep the scum from uh, forming in those retention ponds. I just thought it was a really neat thing that they did. They're just they're they're nice they class up the joint and and disney is is getting away from things that class up the joint genie I, plus they would rather go for some kind of extension of the lightning lane queue they're i i just don't understand this company anymore and and why they are slowly getting rid of all the things that make the most profitable segment of their company 70 percent of their revenue came from disney parks over the last uh is it is it this year or over the last year altogether? Thirty percent of their uh, operating uh, income 
uh, but 70% of their revenue overall came from Disney parks. And yet it seems like they're just working harder and harder to make those parks less of a draw for people. And to, to correct you slightly, uh, 70% of their operating income came from the parks. 30% of that came from Walt Disney World specifically, but ah, okay. the entire company. So it's just, it's, it's really sad how the company isn't very much interested in maintaining what they have and whatever we get in replacement of what we did have. Like in the case of Splash Mountain, for example, it's always less. It is never greater or more. And it is profound. It, 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 I, I don't understand it. And I think this is why the parks are suffering in terms of attendance, because the things that made these things special were slowly losing and people are kind of catching on to that. You know, um, I, I referenced it very, very quickly at the beginning of this video. The thing that makes Epcot special as far as economically is, of course, the festivals that go on there. But the, the festivals, to, to describe it as a festival sounds like, it's oh, it's joyous, bring in a bunch of artisans, the children will play. But really what those festivals are is they bring in a lot of food and they like bring in a lot of, a lot of beverage as well. Uh, and they do uh, markups there on pretty good markup on those. I mean, $15 for a teeny little plate of food. And a lot of what they have done to quote unquote improve Epcot has been to accommodate those festivals. I, I just really, truly do not understand uh anything about how this company operates anymore. I, I I don't think they're special anymore. I think they they own something special and they're trying their best to not let people catch on to the idea that it's not special anymore. And I'm hopeful maybe someone high up in the company is watching this video and understands that you can do something about this. You can turn this around if you just if you just pay attention to the things that used to be great about these parks, think about the things that people would stop and they would tell stories about the little touches in these parks. Those are the kind of things that make Disney special. This is a bit of a bummer of a story to talk about because it's about the state of the company as a whole. Vash, what's going to have to happen in order to change what's going on at Epcot? Well, that's that's the troubling thing, right? These festivals are, are very much special to to happen in Epcot because Epcot was a fantastic place. And unfortunately, like you said so eloquently, that is being stripped away. The managers have to commit to a more robust budget for this park. They have to be able to maintain uh, what they have. And look, I, I understand it's challenging, but this this park specifically brings in gobs of money uh, through these festivals, through these events that they do. We, we have to commit to a, a maintenance program, preserve what we have, first off, and, and to make it better. Some of the things that they've been adding haven't been all that great. Maybe they'll be easier to maintain is the silver lining and all of that. But these other things that make this park special, it is very, very important uh, that, that we dedicate some funding and, and that we make decisions uh, to maintain these for generations to come because the things that set Disney apart, that Disney difference right there, people are catching on to it for sure. Maybe that's part of the $60 billion tranche of funding here. I don't know. Something has to change. I, I agree. And it can't just be updating the queues so that people are more entertained as they uh, try to give you some money for Genie Plus. You have to wow them. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, we want to throw this to our commenters. We've talked a lot about Epcot. We've talked a lot about, about the state of Disney right now. I'm sure that some of you have uh, many thoughts that you'd like to share to us. Um, leave them in the comment section down below and feel free to interact with each other respectfully. I'm going to say that. <laughs> interact with each other respectfully in the comment section down below. Like this video. If you uh, want to support this channel, uh, we really do want to see Disney improve. And of course, uh, consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.